which is five minutes past nine English time. Einstein said time is that which is indicated by clock. I think I know what a clock is, therefore I think I know what time is. Seem to be following an unbelievable... En route, they collected data from the pilot, then put it into Einstein's equations to predict the time change. I bring you the latest news from the cockpit. We have accumulated so far a change of 34 nanoseconds. And, uh, broadly speaking, you know, it seems to confirm the original uh, uh, prediction. The clock will have gained somewhere between 37 and 40 nanoseconds when we land in about half an hour's time. Suppose you would live for 100 years and you would spend your entire life on one of these aircraft uh, flying around the world. You could expect to be younger than people who did not do that by about one ten thousandth of a second. At the speed of a 747, the warping of time is a small effect. To see exactly what happened on this trip, the clock had been lined up to the International Standard Time Scale in London. Then it was compared to the same standard when it landed in the USA. Setting of the time scales of USNO and NPO. I've got in here exactly what we okay. measured at the other end. If we put out the cables in here, and that changes by about 15 nanoseconds, then, then it's okay. And it was. When the experiment was finished, the clock on the plane disagreed with the ones on the ground by 40 nanoseconds. Time on the plane had warped by just what Einstein predicted. 2,900,000, here 2,900,000, at 3 million dollars, 3 million 100,000, 3 million 200,000 dollars, 3 million 300,000 dollars this year, don't wave back there, fair warning now, at 3 million 300,000 dollars. <laughs> But time doesn't just stretch for clocks. Time would stretch for wormholes as well, and that's why they might be turned into time machines. There are several different ways to turn a wormhole into a time machine if you are a clever and infinitely advanced uh, civilization. By an infinitely advanced civilization, I mean somebody who can do anything their heart desires, except they can't violate the fundamental laws. What they could do is send one mouth of their wormhole on an interstellar holiday. Traveling at close to the speed of light would cause time to slow down in that wormhole mouth. During the trip, time would slow just like it did on the 747, but far more because the speed is so much greater and the journey much longer. When the traveling mouth returned to Earth, less time would have passed for it than for the rest of the world and for the other mouth that stayed behind. The wormhole would become a tunnel into the past. If I now go into uh, this wormhole mouth today, I will come out of that mouth yesterday. So in theory, a wormhole could be turned into a time machine. But the practical details were something else again. How an infinitely advanced being might actually make one of these things was far from clear. We then had to face the fact that the one kind of wormhole that we knew as a solution of Einstein's equations was a wormhole that lives for only a very short time. It has a throat that expands, opens, and shuts in a flash so fast that uh, anybody who tries to travel through it in that flash while it's open uh, can't manage to get through. They get crushed in the pinch-off. And there's another problem. Naturally, wormholes are billions of times smaller than atoms, far too small to be useful. If a human ever wanted to travel through one, the wormhole would need to be stretched up and held open. What is it that you need to thread through the wormhole to hold it open long enough for somebody to travel through it? What you needed was something very exotic, some material that has negative energy. 
the bad news is that if you want a wormhole about one meter across, which is a really minimal requirement for something to put a human through, you need about minus one Jupiter's worth of this exotic matter. Ordinary matter, like armchairs, has positive energy. So you might think that needing exotic matter, stuff with negative energy, would rule out a realistic time machine. But in fact, that's not the case. In a lab in Seattle, Steve Lamoureux has shown that negative energy can be made. You can see here there's a, uh, a tungsten wire. Matt Visser is a theoretical expert on negative energy, but he's never seen it for real. Negative energy is made by squeezing energy out of a vacuum that they create in a tiny gap between two plates. That experiment, from our point of view, is a proof in principle that at least small amounts of exotic matter, effectively negative energy, do exist in the real world. So negative energy is real. In the future, an infinitely advanced time tourist might be able to make enough of it to stretch a wormhole big enough and hold it open long enough to make a safe journey into the past. With negative energy real in practice and wormholes real in theory, Thorne took the plunge and went public. My concern was the word time machine in the title, and my worry was that the popular press would see this paper and would start to ballyhoo it in a manner that uh, caused our uh, serious scientific colleagues to pay no attention to it as being crackpot stuff. Very quickly, the rest of the press uh, grabbed hold of it. Well, here we are, we've invented time travel. There are other stories that basically had us building time machines in our own basements. and. Uh, <laughs> I, I rather quickly pulled back and told the Caltech Public Relations Office, I do not give interviews on this subject. I, I told uh, uh, my research group's administrative assistant, uh, I do not return telephone calls from the press on this subject. Uh, I will talk about anything else but not time travel. But Thorne's work brought other scientists out into the open. When I realized that my friend and extremely great scientist, Keith Thorne, published it, I immediately called him and told, thank you so much for that. Now I will publish, I will work on, on this uh, subject also. He was overjoyed. On the other end of the phone, he said, oh, Kip, it's absolutely wonderful. Your paper's wonderful. You've broken the barrier. If you can do research about time travel, then so can I. Igor Novikov had been working on time travel in secret for years. He was interested in the trouble that time travelers might cause if they went back and tried to change history. Once it appeared that time machines were a real possibility, we then had to face the question of paradoxes, of going back in time and changing history, and thereby uh, causing the foundations of physics to crumble beneath us. The grandfather paradox is a uh, very simple science fiction based apparent inconsistency at the very heart of the uh, idea of backwards time travel. That cannonball that knocked my grandfather unconscious in the Civil War battle, so he lay there three days before he came back suppose that I had deflected the cannon slightly and he had really been killed. Where does that then leave you? How do I be get here? Do you instantly pop out of existence because you were never made? But then you couldn't have gone back and so on. Paradoxes with time travel without getting into the nasty business of free will of human beings. If I don't have a uh, time machine at all, then billiard ball physics is very simple and very clear. If I have a time machine, the story is quite different. In this case, I have only one billiard ball. And I send that billiard ball into this mouth of the uh, wormhole, and it will then come out of that mouth before it entered this mouth, hit itself and prevent itself from going into the first mouth. Voila, a paradox. It's the billiard ball version of go back and kill my father before I'm conceived. Of course, this problem was discussed 
a lot uh, in literature, in movies, in uh, science fictions. But I'm talking not about fantasies, but real science. In searching for a resolution of the paradox, we were led by a principle introduced by Igor Novikov, which said that nature will only allow those behaviors that are absolutely self-consistent. So the question then was, can you find a solution of the equations where this ball maybe hits itself but does not produce any self-inconsistency? If a ball emerged in the past, it would have to knock its earlier self into the time machine so that it's there to come out again, and knock itself back in again, and so on. Only then could its behavior be self-consistent. Novikov approached the equations from all angles, and every time only the self-consistent solutions worked out. <laughs> 